In this tutorial, I'll show you two forbidden techniques on how you can work with texture in DaVinci Resolve. But before that, let's watch a microfilm where these te textures, well, these techniques have been used quite a lot. Before we start, when you want to learn more about advanced color grading, there's a link underneath this video to a free training, my free training, uh, called Introduction to Advanced Color Grading. In this free training, I'll show you how you can match your movie, uh, how you can match your footage to a movie reference using the same system as to use in Hollywood and Netflix, and how you can work with your footage like it would be raw, even if your camera doesn't shoot raw uh, video. Anyway, so let's start with the tutorial. And first, are these techniques really forbidden? Well, no, that's kind of like uh, my way of getting you here. But <clears throat> it's really good that you're here because these techniques might be the thing that you have been missing. Because these techniques are uh, used quite, uh, quite a lot in movies and in TV shows. So this might be the missing step on getting your, uh, your footage to that level where you're really happy with it. Who knows? If not, then go and check out the free training on advanced color grading. Anyway, um, here we have uh, like a still from the same short movie that you just saw. And there's a lot of texture work being done. Actually, all of these purple like violet uh, nodes are texture nodes that are affecting the texture. And if I turn them on and off, you can see how they're really affecting the textures in this image. And uh, let me now show you two different techniques on how you can work with texture. And let's uh, go up, let's talk about the first technique. So let's clean this out first. Let's just turn off all of these texture uh, uh, affecting nodes. And then let's clean this out. Let's make this into a compound node and let's call this the grade. And now we can work with texture between the grade and the grain. I want to have the grain as the last uh, last layer. So the first way of working with con uh, texture is to work with contrast. And whenever we add contrast, the area, the luma range or the tonal range, where the pivot point is, there the textures are emphasized. For example, here, this wall is um, like this histogram blob is this wall. So if I add contrast, let's use the normal contrast, not the luma contrast. If I add contrast there, you can clearly see how the texture is emphasized. Of course, the saturation is emphasized as well, because when you add a saturation, that actually, no, when you add contrast, that adds saturation as well. But let's talk about that in a second. And on the other hand, if I bring the pivot point down to the shadow areas, like this, and then I turn this on and off, you can see how the textures are emphasized here. And take a look at these blobs, these uh, blobs in the waveform. This wall is represented by this yellow blob and the blue wall, the blue shadow wall is represented by this uh, blob. And when I turn the uh, contrast off, you can see how the blob is getting thicker. And that's when the um, texture is being emphasized. The luminance range, like the contrast between neighboring pixels are being emphasized. And that's basically when you can get your texture to be more visible. But the challenge here is that with the normal contrast curve, you cannot uh, affect the shadows and the highlights both at the same time. Because, uh, because of the nature of global contrast, uh, if you increase it to some one place, it will be decreased from another place. Uh, and for that, let me show you a trick how you can kind of add contrast to shadow areas and to highlight areas at the same time. And that has to do, let's reset this, and that has to do with tone maps. So let's create our first tone map. And tone maps are simply done by, let's turn on the highlight mode and the black and white mode, are simply done by selecting a certain tonal range area. And I'm just gonna select the shadow areas, the shadows. So the white is selected, the black is not selected, and this dark area is now selected, the bright area is not selected. And this is very important that you denoise your selection a lot. The more you, well, you can decide how much you want by a better trial and error, but I recommend having a lot of it. And now 
if I go to the curves and start adding contrast to this area, it's not affecting the highlight areas because it's not in the mask. And the blurring uh, like um, hides the edges, so it's uh, well, it works better when you have the blur. Remember to have blur. And if I turn it on and off, you can see how the texture is emphasized, the exposure is emphasized as well, the blob gets thicker, so the neighboring pixels are emphasized uh, to, in relationship to each other. But the saturation is still a problem. And instead of using the normal curve, let's reset this and let's just use the Y component. So it's just the Luma curve, so this doesn't affect the saturation. And now when I add contrast to this area, and turn it off and on, you can see how the saturation is not affected. And we could do the same thing to the highlight areas. So let's create highlight tone map. And let's call this one, let's call this shadow tone map. And let's take the mask from this, go to the gain area and let's invert it. And now the white areas are affected, but the blacks are not. So now we have the same, uh, same kind of uh, mask on this. And then we could go here and just add contrast on this wall as well. But actually, I like to have a bit more saturation there, so I'll be using the, uh, the normal curve in this case. And now, if we select all of these and turn them on and off, on, off, on, off, you can see how we were able to add a lot of texture into the image uh, with tone maps and curves. Okay, so that's the first technique, and then let's go to the second technique. So the second technique is to work with local contrast effects in Dyn's Resolve. And there are two uh, ones that I want to show. And uh, let's first work with the mid-dawn details uh, effect. Let's call it MD for short. And that you can find here on the next to lift gamma gain wheels. Here's the mid-dawn details uh, slider. And let's bring it all the way to 100. And if you look at these blobs, if I turn this on and off, you can see how the blobs are getting thicker and thinner thicker when you have it on, thinner when it's off. And here you can see how it's really emphasizing the textures, not so much in the shadows, but at least in the highlights, it's really strong. Um, but the problem with this tool, this is that it doesn't look so good on skin because this is like local contrast. And when we add local contrast, it really emphasizes all the imperfections on the skin, all the wrinkles and all the shine. So it's a good idea when we're working with local contrast to protect your skin tones. And to do that, it's quite easy. Just go to the uh, HSL uh, masking tools. Let's put the highlight mode on, so black and white highlight mode. Let's select our skin tones based on the hue range. And in this case, we were quite lucky because our skin tones were separate. They were separate, like different enough from the wall. So the skin tones were not the same as this wall. Uh, in some cases, you might be, you might even add, need to add some kind of power window to your skin, uh, skin tones to kind of get them selected. But in this case, we don't really need it. And then we could add again a lot of denoise to clean it out. And then let's turn the highlight mode off. And actually, we need to separate, we need to invert it. So now the skin is affected. So now we're actually doing the thing that we didn't want. We are adding uh, texture to our skin. So let's invert this. Now black is not selected, white is selected. And now we can crank this up all the way to 100 without it making our skin tones looking ugly. So that's one way of working with uh, texture by using the mid tone details uh, slider. Another way you could use is to use the sharpen, sharpen tool. So let's go here and let's just bring this all the way down for the sake of this tutorial. And you can really see how it's really emphasizing the textures again and our skin tone. But it doesn't really look good because it looks like digital sharpening because we're using the sharpening tool. So to make the sharpen tool work for this purpose, it's important to go to the sharpen uh, drop down menu and then play around with the scaling as well. And for, for some reason it's not ganked. So let's set this back. Why is it not working? Oh, I'm in the wrong place. Let's click here. Okay, good, now it's working. <clears throat> anyway, so to play around with the scaling to make it work for our purpose, um, work with the radius and the scaling in unison. So bring both of them quite down. And then let's turn this one off so we can see this better. And let's make it stronger. Let's bring this down, that bit up. 
And playing around with these, you can find a way of making the sharpen tool work to increase your textures. Like here it's on, here it's off, here it's on, here it's off. And again, we could uh, take the mask from the previous node, the other, other one, and just make sure that it's not affecting our skin. So let's see how this working combination, combination here's with, here's without, and here's with, and here's without. And we are really, um, we are really kind of like, what is this? Uh, pushing this to the extreme for the sake of this tutorial. Uh, so let me show you one last thing that you can do to remedy, because now it looks kind of like, even though it's not uh, adding, like when we select all of these, it's not adding contrast to our image. And it's not making our brights brighter and the shadows darker, but still it makes our image look a bit harsh. So to remedy that, let's do one more contrast with the Luma curve. So let's call this Luma curve. And let's go here. And then I'm going to just use this Luma, uh, Luma combina, uh, element. And then I'm going to bring the highlights down a bit and the shadows up a bit. And now when I turn all of this on and off, it looks a bit better. We are overdoing this bit for the sake of this tutorial, but you get these ideas. With these tools, by not overdoing it, you can really work with your textures and get the image to shine. So that's for these techniques. And if you want to learn more, when you want to learn more about advanced color grading, there's a free training underneath this video. There's a link underneath this video in the description where you can find my a free training called Introduction to Advanced Color Grading. That will show you uh, the basics on how you can match your uh, footage to a movie reference. And there's a link floating around me somewhere here as well. So you can find the link there as well. So thank you for this tutorial and see you in the next one. Bye.